Hey everyone, it's Alicia with the Pigeon Letters Design Team here with another travel-inspired sketchbook tutorial. I've adapted the techniques in Peggy's book, Mindful Sketching, to work with the tools that I usually turn to, like colored pencils and markers. I'll show you my process as we sketch this scene from my Montana road trip using a limited color palette and one-point perspective. Let's jump in! The supplies we'll use in this project are a sketchbook or a piece of paper, markers, colored pencils, your reference image, and the book Mindful Sketching by Peggy Dean, if you have it, which you should. <laughs> so one way that I really love to make my art feel unique and not super lifelike is by going with a limited color palette and mostly unrealistic colors. So in this image, it's definitely, you know, blue sky, green grass, dark colored asphalt, things like that, but I'm going for brighter colors. So I have chosen three different blues and this kind of peachy orange color. And I think that that is plenty. I would recommend sticking to about three to five colors that coordinate together when you wanna do a limited palette. Um, as you see in this example image here, I stuck with that same peachy color and then a couple different shades of purple, plum, violet, that whole color scheme. And then I have a darker Payne's gray for some of those darker details. And I love the look of a limited color palette. I think that it enhances the look of an image um, versus some where maybe I went with a lot of colors, not necessarily that one. This one's also a limited color palette. Um, this one was definitely a realistic um, color palette here that I drew. Um, but And I think that it looks fine, but I, I just love the look of keeping it simple and kind of unrealistic. So that's why I chose these colors. And then we need to grab coordinating pencils. So I have a few here um, that kind of go with the blues, maybe are a little bit darker than the actual blue markers that I chose uh, so that they can go on top pretty easily and allow me to add detail. I also have this darker green, which I'm gonna use for the tree line to add a few trees. This um, salmon color will coordinate with the salmon colored pen uh, marker that I used. And then I have um, a darker violet and a Payne's gray. I'm not sure which one I want to use for the like darkest details and outlines, but I have them both there just in case. So it's time to get into sketching. The first step to do is, well, really the first step is to draw kind of a wonky box. So I'm drawing this image um, to be like a horizontal or landscape image. So I'm just gonna go around it twice, make a nice rectangle. Boom, there's my frame. I think that in sketchbooks and travel sketchbooks or any anything like that where it's not just a final product, you don't have to feel the pressure to um, tape it off and make it like a perfect edge unless you really want to. I just think it adds character, it adds to the piece that you're doing, and it, it takes the pressure off of having to make it feel perfect. And the whole idea behind mindful sketching and doing, you know, travel sketchbooks to me is to make it relaxing, to make it fun, to capture a scene or a memory or a moment without the pressure of like, oh my god, but that looks messed up or the lines aren't perfect, whatever. So setting the scene by making a really imperfect box can just get you in the right mindset here. So, time to begin. First things first, we need to find our vanishing point. If you have the book, you've read the book, you know that right now, looking at this image, this is an example of one point perspective, which means there is one point on this image in the um, frame where the horizon kind of comes to, everything vanishes together. <laughs> the book explains it so much better than I do. And if you're looking at it from the perspective of sitting in the car, you just look straight down the road in the image and as the road just sort of disappears into nothing and becomes mountains, that's our vanishing point. And because this is a landscape and not like a cityscape that has buildings in the way, you can clearly see where our horizon is. So I'm just gonna take a look at my image and it's about between a quarter and a third of the way up the page where our horizon is. So I'm just gonna draw the actual vanishing point where I'm gonna take my road lines to which is sort of centered, but maybe a little bit towards the left and draw a little mark there. And then I'm going to actually just dive in and start sketching our shapes with the horizon. And again, just 
start with a color pencil pick one of your lighter shades you don't want to go super dark with this layer because we're going to go back over it in the end uh, with a darker pencil to get those nice outlines um but that's the difference between using the fine liner versus doing it in this colored way we're kind of working backwards let your pencil wobble Hold, sometimes I like to hold it a little bit differently than I normally would, grip it weird, because I want those wobbly, wonky, sketchy lines. I think that it makes things look more fun, adds more character, makes them feel a little bit less precise and perfect. So if you just change your grip up a little bit, you might automatically get a more wobbly line, and that kind of works. So next step, I want to add the road. The road is pretty obvious, pretty big, and the best way I think to do it is to start at the vanishing point and draw the lines outward. So just refer back to the photo and see where those lines go and try to mimic that a little bit. So I'm going to start at that point and just come straight out. And same thing on the other side. It doesn't go, it doesn't go quite into the corner, um, so I just made sure that I depicted that correctly. And then we have two more main shapes to sketch out for this one. Uh, the first one's gonna be our tree line, and then the second one will be the mountain range line. So if you take a look at the image, the tree line is just above the horizon. It's definitely darker. The mountains are behind it and they're a lot lighter. And it's sort of jagged, it varies in height uh, based on the size of the trees. So as you do it, there's no rhyme or reason, just literally make jagged, sort of make a jagged line, basically. Because um, we're gonna fill this in with marker, but then we'll also go back in and make some detailed, make some general tree shapes, I should say, not super detailed, because it is really far in the distance. Last but not least, we're gonna add our mountains. So it's not so much a jagged line as much as it's sort of like a varying line. Um, so you want to be a little bit smoother, but still varying in size or height and shape. And, you know, sometimes it's lower, sometimes it's higher. Doesn't have to be exact to the photo. Um, I probably could have done that better, but it's fine. It is what it is. <laughs> so now we are moving on to our marker stage. This is where we need to just take a hot second and think about what color you want to put in each main shape of the image because you don't necessarily want the same color touching itself. I don't wanna say, oh, I'm gonna use this peach for the mountains, but then also decide I want it for the trees and then it's touching each other and it kind of makes it a little bit difficult. So I think that because the tree line is definitely darker than both the grass foreground and the mountain range, I want this darker teal to be my tree line. And then I think because the mountain range is lighter, but in real life it's also green, um, I'm gonna, you know, similar color family, I'm gonna go with this lighter teal, this medium kind of color. I am choosing not to fill in the grass and the reason for that is because I definitely want to add detail to the sky and I definitely want to fill in the road um, and I think leaving a little empty space here will make it feel less cluttered so in that case what I'm gonna do is use this blue for my road and then I will use this color for the grass along the road there's some like tall grass um, I'll add that in and then I'm going to do this for part of the sky as well because I do like in the image that I took this kind of close to sunset time so the sky was definitely orange closer to the horizon and then it was bluer um, toward the top so I'll probably pick one of the blues to fill in near the top and I'll use the orange near the bottom and that way none of the colors are touching itself in these color blocks. So now it's time to just fill in the uh, markers. I'm going to start with the road here. There's no rhyme or reason. You can scribble, you can do lines, whatever you like. Um, 
like do straight lines. I try to not uh, I try not to make them too exact. You know, so if they kind of come out of the lines or they don't completely fill the lines, it doesn't matter because I'm going to go back over it um, with another darker pencil, those outlines, but also it's a travel sketchbook piece. It's meant to be fun. I like to do these. Uh, well, ideally, I like to do them when I'm actually traveling, but a lot of the time it's not until I get home. Um, but the thing is, if I'm sketching while I'm traveling, I don't have a ton of time to sit around. I think I mentioned this in my last tutorial. I don't have so much time to just sit and, and draw. Um, sometimes I might have 15, 20 minutes before dinner or something. So I'm not taking a lot of time. It's just really casual and laid back, uh, this process. So let's go, let's do the mountains first. You can fill everything in completely solidly <laughs> solidly okay um or you can kind of like i like these kind of brushier pens because you can go thick and thin with your lines um if you were to choose not to fill it in totally you could just like kind of do a more brushy effect i guess i would say i don't think i'm demonstrating that very well but um it doesn't matter because i'm filling mine in anyway I just wanted to show you, you had options. So I'm just gonna fill this in. One of my tips when you choose colors for your markers, which are your base layer, don't choose anything too dark because you want pencil to show up on top of it. So I do have an additional teal that's even darker than that one that I thought about using for the tree line, but it's, the, my pencil wouldn't show up on top of it and so we would just lose any sense of detail in it. Um, I need to do the trees but I'm going to give this um, layer a second to um, dry. I just don't want it to bleed any. So I'm going to wait a hot second. I guess I'll go along the horizon line first. And I'm just letting those lines be wobbly and messy like I said before. That's the name of the game here. You know, because this does come to a fine point, but it's still a bulky enough uh, marker that, like, trying to have any precision in details is just not really going to happen well. So if you just accept it as you're doing it, you won't get mad. I'm trying not to go over the marker more than once because I don't want the paper to you know, get that thing where it's kind of oversaturated and then the paper starts to, not pill, but I can't think of the word, but the paper starts to get all weird. I don't want to do that. So these are pretty juicy markers. These are um, watercolor markers, I guess they're actually called. Um, and so they're, they're pretty juicy. So I have to be careful on my paper. Um, and I think for this layer, that's all I'm going to do because when I bring in the um, this marker we're going to go in next with some details and then the sky and there's a little trickiness to the sky because of the clouds so um yeah I think that's all for like the main coloring in layers so now to fill in the marker details um this is where we're going to go in with a lighter hand and not be so filling it in so solid we're going to take a lighter hand be very brushy very sketchy that sort of thing so what I need to do now is this grass on the side of the road. I'm not filling the whole thing in solid, but I'm going to draw that grass and just do some light, brushy upward strokes. And what I'm going to do is start from this outer edge and work my way in. And out here, those grasses are a lot taller. And as I get closer to our um, vanishing point, those strokes are going to get a lot shorter. Now these obviously don't look like grasses right here, um, but again, this is the base layer. These are our color blocks. When I go back over it with the pencil, that's when I'm, it's going to have a, that more streaky kind of thin look like grass. Um, but for right now, we're just trying to put like base color down so that underneath the pencil, it has a nice color to it. So just 
lighter if you can, upward strokes, and then get smaller as you go. Does not have to be perfect. And now the sky. So, like I mentioned, I've chosen to do the sky. I think I'm gonna do the, not the lightest blue and not the darkest teal. I'm gonna do this medium one for my sky. Because again, the reference image was at sunset. So the sky is actually like blue and orange in my photo. So I'm gonna start with the orange right by this mountain line. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make these really light brushy sort of, um, Ooh, brush mark motions, very light, to mimic the shape of the clouds as best I can. Um, what I don't want to do, and if I can find a piece of scrap paper, of course I can't find one where I need one. What I don't want to do is, we'll just do it here, one of these. I don't want to make cartoon clouds in this case. You can if that's totally your style. Uh, that's not what I'm aiming for. So I'm going to avoid the solid like C curve. Um, and instead I'm going to do very brushy motions. I'm holding the marker uh, further back. So I'm not heavy handed, I'm really light handed on it. And as I get closer to the mountains and the horizon, the clouds are a lot smaller. And you don't even have to fill in the whole thing. Be really light and sketchy with it. Just, you want to just give a spot that you know when you go back in to fill it in, not to color that. So we're, I know not to fill in that um, shape there. And as we add pencil, uh, details, then it'll definitely give a little bit more of a cloud shape. So, just gonna add a little bit down here. Things don't have to be perfect for your eye to understand what it's looking at. Um, it's almost like an illusion. Your eye totally knows that those are clouds, even though right now there's nothing colored in in the background. They're not a perfect cloud shape. Your eye literally looks at this and says, this is clearly a road, this is a mountain range, and those are clouds. So don't think you need everything to be perfect for it to be understood. Just gonna add a few more up here now with the blue. Again, there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm not actually like really trying to make the clouds look exactly as they do in the photo. I just wanted to fill in the sky. So now that I did that, I'm going to come back in and this is when I'm going to do less of a solid fill in and more of like a sketchy, like really light, just kind of come in and fill in spaces between those clouds that I made. You could technically like sketch your clouds and then fill just the clouds in and leave the sky to be white, but I kind of like the negative space to be in the cloud itself because we've chosen unrealistically looking colors. And so I think by keeping some things relatively realistic, it helps it from looking completely insane. Not that there's a problem with that. I'm kind of varying between using the tip and then like pressing down to get more of the belly of that brush pen down um, so that the brush um, like stroke kind of varies in size from being really thin to kind of thick. So I'm not going to fill this in too much because I'm going to come in and bring the blue in now. So I'm just going to start up here. Again, holding the brush pen further back on it on itself so that it's not, I'm not right up on it, like coloring it in. I'm just keeping a pretty light hand, varying my pressure. So 
So I think for now that's good enough. And now that's our last step with the markers. So they can be set aside and we're just gonna fix ourselves up with uh, pencils now. So the first thing I wanna do with the pencils is, I think I'm gonna draw this grass in. So just like we did with the marker, with these just brush strokes, these light brush strokes, not a lot of control in the brush. I'm just gonna do that with this pencil. This um, pencil isn't super dark compared to the marker, but it still shows up enough in real life that you can see those strokes. And I should have sharpened it so that I got really thin strokes up there, but it's fine. It's a sketchbook. That's what I always tell myself. It's just a sketchbook. And same thing on this side. Just kind of let off the pressure as you go upward and it'll kind of taper that tip a little bit. And remember to get smaller as you get towards the horizon, toward that vanishing point because it vanishes, hence the name. Um, okay, so we've done that. Now we need to add some trees. So this darker line, remember, was our tree line. It is not a mountain range, even though it looks like that. So what I'm going to do is go in with this darker pencil and just make scribbles because they're so far in the distance, we don't need them to look perfectly like actual trees. Um, and then what I'm going to do is leave a gap. I'm going to leave two gaps. Do you see those two trees on the left side of the road? I'm going to fill those in after because I'm still undecided on what color I want them to be. So I'm just going to leave two gaps in the um, tree line. So one's going to be a little bit larger. So I'm going to say like from here to here and then the other one will be a smaller. Just marking that for myself because I think I'm doing those trees in a different color, but I haven't decided yet. So let's go in and make scribbles. You can try to mimic tree shapes if they look more like an evergreen. Uh, you can do pointy, pointy tree shapes like a triangle. Um, if you think they're deciduous trees, is that right? Um, <laughs> you can do kind of round scribbly spirals. Um, but the point is it's just mimicking trees somehow. Because we don't have room for perfection here. Alright, so I think that is all I want to do with that green. I think I do. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is I want to put out, I think I'm gonna go with the purple instead of my Payne's gray. I'm gonna go with this violet purple. It'll add a little interest to the image. Um, I'm gonna do the lines on the road now. So same thing as before. Just trace over that line we already have there, but I'm gonna trace over it twice because I want the, I keep saying it, but that wonky wobbly looking line so again, I'm keeping my grip pretty tight to the front and holding it sort of weird so that it automatically makes my lines a little crazier. So now I need to draw the lines in the road. You have the two shoulder lines and then the center dashed line, um, which doesn't come directly toward the front. It kind of goes off to the side a little bit based on the image. So I'm going to do this side. I'm going to start it really close to the, sh the edge of the road and then it's going to widen. And same thing over here. And then our dashed line is going to start with tiny dashes so tiny that you can't even tell that they're dashes in the back. And then slowly start to extend the lines as you get closer to the front, the foreground. Little details like that really add to the perspective. Um, that's why I love doing things that involve this single point perspective. Because as you'll see when we add the fence and the um, electric poles, 
anything where you can distinguish the foreground being larger and the, and the background being smaller, you really get that sense of perspective. And it's kind of neat. Um, I think that it just adds something to a scene when you can at least get that accurate, even if everything else is pretty casually done. Um, so I'm going to go through with this purple. And this is actually what I'm going to use for those trees. So let's do those first. So I have two trees here. And just scribbles, but because these are actually closer to the foreground than that whole tree line in the back, make sure that they're a little bit taller, um, just like in the image. Just refer to the reference so you can see kind of how much taller you want to make it. Like this one kind of looks like it's taller than the mountains. And then the other one here, it's a little more, it's even bigger because it's further toward us. Probably gonna make this one about here because again, just like with everything else, we want to follow that line up. Boop, 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 boop. So we want it to be. Oh, I drew on it. Whoops. We want it to be about that high. This doesn't have to be exact either. Like, as long as it's a everything's a little bit bigger in the foreground. Again, your eye understands what it's looking at. And these are just scribbles. You're just like kind of mark making here. Because again, you know this is a tree. You don't have to draw every little petal and leaf and stuff for it to know that it's a tree. But we also don't want to make like a cartoon tree where you're like, boop, 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 boop. Also, you don't have time to do that if you're trying to sketch out on your travels or something. You know, the idea here is keep it, keep it simple, keep it kind of quick. All right, our trees look pretty. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually just like go over the horizon line again. Just using this to kind of outline stuff. I'm not going to outline the tree line, but I am going to just outline the um, mountain range, the top. Getting a little wobbly, and I like that. Okay. Um, Let's see, what else do I want to add in here with the purple? I think that's it for the purple, for now. Um, I want to jump into the sky really quickly. So what I'm going to do is go back with this salmon color. And just like I did with the marker when I made these cloud shapes, I'm going to take this and really lightly like make these little C curves in various sizes, but really lightly handed, really brushy, not cartoon cloud-like. So it's just going to be something like this. They might not all connect. I'm not going to fill the whole cloud in. Some of them might be really long C curves. Some of them might be small. I just want to add a little bit more of a definition to these clouds without like totally, you know, drawing them in. So just add a few of these in where you have those white spaces. Okay, and then I'm going to take this and because the clouds are kind of shadowy underneath, I'm just going to really, really lightly just do some little um, light coloring in just on the kind of bottom of the cloud to indicate that shadow and give it a little bit of a 3D effect. Not a lot and not dark. It might not even be showing up on camera. That's how light I'm going. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing, but with the blue pencil. Do I want to use that color? I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to do the same thing, just kind of... I feel like that's almost not dark enough. Oh, do I want to use this one? I mean, let's try. Yeah, I kind of like that. But I'm not going to shade it in with that dark green. I'm actually going to go in with this lightest um, blue color that I pulled. And just do that in. Really light. 
just some scribbles on the bottom to make some shadow. Like that. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. And then the last thing, it's kind of oddly enough one of my favorite things to add fences um, when I have um, like a, a one point perspective kind of drawing because again, I think it just adds to the perspective. And so this photo not only has a fence, but it um, also has electric poles, which ordinarily you would think, I don't wanna include those, but it's kind of interesting, I think, to draw them in. So once again, because our vanishing point here is right at the end of the road where it meets the trees and the mountains, as we draw our uh, vertical lines for the fence post, they're gonna stay pretty vertical, but they're gonna be really tiny back there. And remember, as we pull away from this, just like everything else, it's gonna kind of follow a line. So my fence post is gonna be a little bit further out from this, but it's still gonna follow a line, the bottom of them and the top of them. So I will show you what I mean after I draw them in. So I'm not actually drawing the line, but maybe I can even hold my fingers here just to show myself where they should start at the bottom. and space them further out as you get more toward the camera. Let's go like that. Maybe one more there. Eee. Okay, and then the tops should, I think I drew these ones a little bit tall. So these guys could be a little taller, just to kind of keep with our perspective. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to pull a ruler out and do it, but in general, if everything sort of gets larger, um, as you get closer to the camera and it kind of keeps on that scale, you're good to go. Um, and so really lightly, I'm just going to connect these with like the wire or whatever the fence actually used. Okay. And then last but not least, and I did this in um, Payne's Gray. I probably could have used the purple for the fence actually. Um, in fact, I'm gonna take the purple, and there's a little barn back there. So I'm just gonna sketch that little barn in real quick. And now I'm gonna go in and add these um, telephone pole, what was I calling them? Electric poles, telephone poles, whatever they are, poles. Um, so same thing, just kind of get myself a guide here where to start and how tall do I want it to go. This definitely comes up taller than the mountains. So I'm gonna go there. So the rest of them should follow that. Okay. So my bottom should be, oh, so it can be a little bit longer here. And again, this invisible line, if it was coming down, it would start here, an invisible line. And make it just progressively smaller and closer. I'm gonna thicken this line because it's closer to us. The other ones, as they get smaller, they don't have to be quite as thick. And let's cross them and add that little detail in. And now for sure, last but not least, we're just gonna connect those wires by just like a light C curve to connect all of the points of that cross on the left side and then all of the ones on the right. So just like this. And then the ones on the right will connect. Keep a really light hand when you do those. You don't want them to be um, really bright at all or dark at all. And just take a look and see what you think. I like this. Um, first of all, I should have filled more of this in. Sometimes when you finish, you notice things. You're like, oh, I should have done that. 
I'm gonna let that dry a second. The pencil doesn't go on top of wet marker really well. Um, so while I wait for that to dry, the other thing I really wanna do is take a really light color, probably the same blue I did in the cloud, and just add some kind of um, some scribbles in here. It's such a light color, it barely shows up, but it's enough to be there to kind of add a little something, a little texture, I guess. Because I like it being like white and open, but not totally empty. Right, let me go back and fill that in. Get our grass there. And I think that's it. I think that's our um, little Montana scene. I'm going to draw it in here. Montana. Um... Yeah, and that's it. So I think that this is a really good technique to take on the road. If you're not sitting here talking and showing someone how to do it, you can definitely get through this a lot faster. And the beauty in that is it's something you can do on the road. So whether you choose to do, um, you know, color or you choose to go the route of, you know, the, just the ink, this is something you can really do anytime, anywhere, whether you're referencing a photo you've taken or you're actually sitting you know, in a cafe and you're sketching a city street or something in front of you, um, it's a great skill to have. And I think that learning how to draw with a little perspective, um, kind of just, it makes your work look really nice. I think that it, it's a good talent to have, a good skill to have. So thank you for watching. I hope this was enjoyable. If you choose to do this, definitely share it on social media. Definitely tag the Pigeon Letters and myself at the Alicia Bruce. I would love to see it and share it if your account is um, public. So happy sketching, happy traveling, and peace out. <laughs>